Okay, class and everybody watching or listening, welcome back. Um, we are here this time with two members of the Grand Circle Tour podcast, and we've had a few people from the Grand Circle Tour podcast on before um, to talk about a few different things, and people in the class or who have listened regularly know uh, Stan has been on a few times now, but we're joined by Holly Crawford and Stan Solo, and so what our conversation today is going to be about is D23, the expo that ended um, or that ran from September 9th to 11th um, in Anaheim, California. And this is, as we talked about, the major um, sort of Comic-Con just solely for Disney. It is the biggest fan event that Disney um, offers. And so I want to welcome both of you to class. And if uh, to start off, if you could briefly give us kind of your introduction of um, just how you got into Disney, um, how you got to where you are today with your Disney fandom, and then we'll go ahead and get started with D23. So Holly, you go ahead first. Like you said, I'm Holly. I'm from the Grand Circle Tour podcast. I live in Southern California, so it's a no-brainer that Disneyland is in my backyard. So I've always been a Disney fan. Um, I think I've just embraced it a lot more um, since becoming a mom. So I am a mom of four, and that's why I go by Ringmaster Holly on the podcast because I have my own circus complete with monkeys. Well, not monkeys. I don't like monkeys, but um, a lot of <laughs> trained animals here. So yeah, I mean, Southern California resident, no brainer there for Disneyland. Okay. Well, thank you. And go ahead, Stan. Yeah, mine's a bit longer. <laughs> 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 Sit back, relax. Uh, no, my, well, mine, um, growing up, uh, watching the wonderful world of color with uh, Uncle Walt, Walt Disney, uh, hosting it and always showing us Disneyland, this project he's working on. Now, I'm not that old. Like, it was in repeats when I got to watch it. <laughs> but it was, I was a kid. I was, I was like five, six, seven years old. I remember watching every Sunday afternoon, The Wonderful World of Color, and Walt Disney talking about Disneyland and how wonderful this place is going to be. And then once it opened, how wonderful it is. And, and showing like, all this stuff. And, of course, I was like, Mom, we got to go to Disneyland. We got to go to Disneyland. And she's like, I grew up in, in Canada in a small, small town. I mean, we had more churches and we did stop signs kind of give you an idea of how small the town was and there was she was like you're not going you're never going to Disneyland forget about it you're not going so it was kind of like you know you get older you kind of forget about it and then once I had kids of my own I'm like well I've never been to Disneyland I want to go to Disneyland so I started researching I didn't even know there was a difference between Walt Disney World and Disneyland at the time and started researching it so I didn't get to go until I was an adult when I went with my daughter and we had such a good time. We went for one week. We went to the four parks. We ended up going to Walt Disney World instead of Disneyland. We went to all four parks and the two water parks and Disney Quest and downtown Disney and all that. Uh, got back from our trip, put the suitcases down, called up, booked for the following year for two weeks this next year. <laughs> and uh, been going ever since. Now my daughter doesn't go anymore. I, I go by myself <laughs> for the most part. <laughs> <laughs> and and uh, Captain Solo, I guess, is my nickname on the podcast. Okay. All right. And thanks. And and that's, um, you know, Stan and I have talked about this, that I went a few times as a kid. Um, and then I probably didn't go for 20 or 25 years, something like that. Um, until pretty, uh, 2012 was the first time I went back. Um, more recently, we, we've gone probably every two or two and a half years since then. Um, and actually I've only been to Walt Disney world, um, because I grew up in Texas. And so we would drive, um, wake up or actually my, my parents, my mom and grandmother would get us up at two in the morning and we would sleep in the van on wake up in Florida and think we were there. And then, you know, but we were in the panhandle of Florida. So we had <laughs> still had like seven more yeah. hours, <laughs> but, um, and, uh, but we were we were supposed to go to Disneyland. We were scheduled to go to Disneyland in May 2020. And, you know, obviously yeah. the universe had other plans that. Um, and so it's it's always it's always been a goal of me mine to make it out there um, oh, yeah. and to see 
the original park and everything that uh, try to go to the studio and try to see the different things around that area. Um, and so I always like to try to talk to people who have been to Disneyland. And so, so I'm really happy that you're here, Holly, to, to kind of fill in on a lot of that. Yeah. And I, it's so funny because most like Stan, he knows exactly the first time he went, I have no idea the first time I went, mm -hmm. I don't have a lot of like specific memories because I've just always have gone. So mm -hmm. I feel very blessed and spoiled in that aspect. And now I go way too often. The last three <laughs> weeks, I've been there probably more than I've been home just because of the expo and just things happening. Um, so it's it's really strange to look back and I don't have like photos of me as a child, but I know that I went as a child and as a young adult. And um, But back then I used to go maybe once or twice a year um, because, you know, it was, it was expensive, even though yeah. I was local, I remember that it was still a big deal to go. So yeah. the reality is, is Holly's mom took her to the county fair and just told it was Disneyland. <laughs> <laughs> That's why there's no photos. <laughs> they were all, they yeah, were all it's, I mean, but it's, it's crazy though, because the amount of photos that, well, I mean, most people take, but I take at one trip to Disneyland in four hours or five hours or whatever we're there for the day. And looking back, there's like no photos. Um, mm -hmm. You know, it's, it's crazy how that works now. Yeah. Mm -hmm. um, so to talk, to introduce what D23 is, um, it is kind of the, well, I, it says it behind me, the ultimate Disney fan ex event. And it is, um, is it fair to explain it like, nerved fest <laughs> disney nerd fest yes <laughs> and and so it, and it, it's like it, you know it's like a comic-con just for disney right like mm -hmm. anything disney related i mean they have they have people from marceline missouri there they have people from the the walt disney family museum they also have they have panels every year where they're talking about what's new in the parks what's new and um, a lot of the popular franchises like Marvel and uh, Lucasfilm and everything. And so my, my, my first question is, um, especially Holly, because you mentioned being, being there, being at Disneyland so often frequently or recently because of the expo, how far is the Anaheim Convention Center where it's held? How close is that to Disneyland? what is it a mile did we figure okay. out like like less than a mile yeah it's really it's close yeah okay. i mean it's but the blocks are long so yeah. the blocks are especially <laughs> long block. you, you especially can't, you when you're walk walking the street and walk through the gate because the gate's yeah. halfway down the street like okay yeah. okay so um, it's close <laughs> so so what is your what was it's your overall distance. sorry stan it, it's walking distance between the convention center to the parks okay so yeah First, what was your overall experience of D23? Stan, I know you, this is not your first one to have gone to, right? Yeah, no, this was my second one. Okay. And Holly, this was your first one to go to, right? Correct. Okay. Yes. So what was your overall experience of those? Go ahead, Holly. The jury is still out on how okay. I feel about it. <laughs> um, honestly, if it weren't for the podcast and Stan, and I don't know that I would have gone um, okay. because I... I didn't know a whole lot about it, but I figured, okay, I need to fully embrace my Disney nerd. So let's, let's do this. Stan was going, I actually just met Stan for the first time, um, the day before the expo. Mm -hmm. So I figured it was a good in opportunity. Person. Yeah. In person, obviously. <laughs> um, it was a good opportunity to meet him, meet some other, um, you know, passengers, as we call them, or people that we've been talking to over the internet and, and things like that. Um, so it was more chaotic than I imagined, definitely. Um, and exhausting. I knew it was going to be exhausting because anytime you do something <laughs> from morning till, till evening, you know, it's going to be exhausting, but it was very different from what I expected. I kind of expected it to be more um organized just yeah more organized um 
I knew that to get into certain panels, you had to be there early because Stan mm -hmm. had warned me, but I didn't know that if you weren't going to those panels, you still had to wait for hours for things. So yeah, it was definitely not what I expected, but I honestly didn't have a whole lot of expectations either. Okay. So, okay. But okay, so Holly says it was exhausting. And let me explain something here. <laughs> so, so we, we got to the, to the uh, checkpoint probably about eight, nine o'clock in the morning. Now there are people there that are, <laughs> four o'clock in the morning but, but mm -hmm. we, we wanted to kind of go a little bit later uh to try to avoid that long line so we're there from what eight nine o'clock in the morning till six or seven o'clock at night and we went out for dinner the first night with a group of of the passengers from the grand circle tour podcast we had a, a planned outing the first night and then the next night it was the same thing we're back there first thing in the morning and we're there all day and I'm, you know, I'm kind of tired already because we've been going, you know, <laughs> the first day till one o'clock in the morning or midnight or whatever it was. And I didn't you you went to the parks after dinner that first night too? Didn't yeah, you? yeah. Yeah. So after we went out for dinner, Holly went to Disneyland. Um, so the you next would day, I think I'd never been before. <laughs> <laughs> so the next day, I after the after the expo, uh, what happened? I think I went back to to the hotel, and yeah. Holly went to Disneyland. Okay. okay. <laughs> Until one or two in the morning, and and then and then the following day we both went to Disneyland. But she's wondering why she was exhausted. <laughs> well, geez, Louise, you were night night time at Disneyland is my absolute favorite. Um, I like to stay until the park closes okay. and and after I love to be there after the park is closed because they don't kick you out right away and you can just kind of wander around and it's just so peaceful and pretty and you can get some really good photos without tons of people in it so so even though the park closed at midnight I'm really not getting out of there till closer to 1 a.m until yeah. the security guards start scooting you out so <laughs> yeah and yeah. on on that like Holly, because you because you're local, um, and I'm not suggesting that your your kids go until one in the morning, but like on a like, do you sometimes pick your kids up from school, and then that and then y'all will go to Disneyland in the evening for a few hours? Like, is is that because yes. I know yeah. a lot of local people mm -hmm. that do that, right? So, um, so then, Stan, what was your overall experience of D23? Well, I, I can't help but compare it to the first one I went to. And I have to say, I don't know what it was, but this one just didn't seem to measure up to the first one. Uh, Maybe it was I, your I, company. I, no, no, no. Uh, <laughs> the company was what, 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 made, what made it awesome. Um, I don't know. It just, it just fell flat in a lot of ways. Uh, the panels were not as exciting or as yeah. big, it seemed. The park's announcement wasn't as big as they were. Uh, in past expos um it was they're always disorganized the first day the sunday the last day was really busy which totally shocked me because any huge uh, convention i went to generally the last day people are kind of more mellow and it's mm -hmm. it's more easy going casual and it's kind of like when you get on a cruise ship and you get on everybody's excited everybody's running around and doing things and by the last day on the cruise ship people are kind of leveled off yeah you know but it seemed like that Sunday was just as hectic as the Friday was. Do you yeah, and he, go ahead, Holly? Yeah. And he kept setting it up too for weeks. Okay. It's going to be crazy Friday, Saturday, blah, blah, blah. And Sunday it's going to be relaxed. They're going to have sales on all the merchandise and nobody's going to be there. And so I kept thinking, okay, it's going to be better Sunday. I can do more shopping, this and that. And it was worse. I think it was worse Sunday than Friday. So I think everybody got that same memo. And <laughs> I don't know. Sunday? Yeah. <laughs> so, and, and I, I, I've listened to um, the GCT uh, review of it as well by now. And so, um, and I, I heard um, the three of you talk about you, you two and, and Beatrice talk about uh like needing reservations to go shopping and everything. Stan, is that something that's happened at at the, in past D23s or at the, the past one that you went to? Or is this something yeah, new? So this was actually better. Um, okay. You know how like at Disneyland and at Disney World, you, you could make a reservation to go on an attraction now mm -hmm. instead of, uh, it's almost like a, like a paid lightning line, lightning yeah. lane, or how it used to be, I guess. I used to get on Galaxy's Edge, you get up at, 
you know, nine o'clock in the morning, right at nine o'clock, you could book your, your, your passes. It's like that now for the shopping, but it seemed almost, it's like you, you kind of pick what store you want to go to, but you can only pick one store each day, but you can okay. also bring a friend. So I could be, get one, Holly can get one, we can get a friend, we can each bring each other. Okay. Uh, and so I really liked the way they did it this time because in past, there was no reservation system and you just stood in line for three hours to get into one of these big stores. Okay. Was and, it... Um, it was ridiculous. And, and was it was it the same... Um, was it same capacity or was it... Um, I mean, did they... Did they say that they were having this reservation because of like space limitations or was it the same capacity as last time? I, th I think it was an attempt to get more organized Okay, compared to, to people <laughs> waiting. Sting. I mean, it, it, literally you wait in line four hours to get into a store to shop last time. Whereas this time, Holly, we did our reservations. What was it like 20 minutes to wait? Yes. But I, and while I think that's great, I didn't like that you could only get, maybe get into one store. And if you didn't know about that, Mm -hmm. then you didn't get to go in a store. Um, not that it, it was a big deal because there, I don't think we even <laughs> bought anything. Oh, you did uh, the last, the last I, day, I like one thing. Muppet things, yeah. But so yeah, the merchandise was a bit disappointing, but yeah. So I agree that's better than waiting three to four hours. That's just nuts. But I just wish there was more opportunities, I guess, maybe, because, I mean, they didn't well, have that was, many stores. They had two per day. You could do it again at noon, couldn't you? Yeah, but they went quicker than the yeah. Rise boarding groups. Like it was crazy. <laughs> they went quick. Yeah. So I mean, and yeah. you were allowed to bring your friend, which is nice. Like yeah, that is good. Yeah. So you could kind of. So we if, did do that. If you went, if you had, uh, you could bring one friend. So basically, you could go to two different stores if you're signing up for two different things, right? Yeah. Right. So we okay. did. Once we figured it out, we did do that um so we didn't know about it the first day and i began yeah and that's stuff. that's the problem yeah stan was yeah. i didn't know anything i finally i think two days before Holly i'm found like out about it. Uh, i better start looking into things yeah <laughs> well <laughs> and that's send me stuff for weeks and i'm like i don't have time to read all this information and then like two days before i'm like i gotta have a plan like no, i gotta I figure out what i'm <laughs> doing was it like six in the morning or seven in the morning you could book it? What time was yeah, it? Yeah, 6 a.m. And then I think 1 p.m. <laughs> so you could try yeah. 6 a.m. And then again at 1 p.m. Okay. So, so I'm in my hotel room and I get a message from Holly saying, hey, did you get a, did you get a store booked? I have no idea what she's talking about. Yeah, <laughs> she didn't tell me about the store booking you can do. Well, I didn't know it either because somebody had messaged me, and I'm like, for sure, Stan knows because he know he's been sending yeah. me information, and he didn't know about it either. But yeah, so it was it, because it, I had a friend that messaged me and said, "Oh, I got a." I keep calling them boarding groups for the shops, but did you? And I'm like, same thing. What? So, hmm. yeah, 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 I've I've never I, I've never heard of that. And Holly, I would yeah. have been much like you if I would have. <laughs> I've never been to a D23. I would be much like that, not knowing what you don't know when you when you walk right. into these things. So um, the I, I watched a few videos um, of different people walking around the convention center. And obviously the convention, for people who don't know, the convention center is huge, I know. It is huge. massive. Um, and it takes up the whole convention center, correct? Mm -hmm. Yeah. This, uh, yeah. Even, even the basements, everything. Okay. The, the third floor, the second floor, the yeah. arena next door, everything okay. <laughs> is all D23. Um, and so what, what's the experience? Like, what do you see when you walk around just on the exhibit floor? And, and what were some kind of standouts for you two when you were walking around? Um, I'm good or bad. Go ahead, Sam. Um, well, a lot of things that a lot of times people, when they think about comic conventions or sci-fi conventions, they always talk, think about the cosplayers. And when you watch the media views or you watch YouTube videos, they're always showing the cosplayers. And it's a very, very small percentage of people that dress up in cosplay. And they do tend to sent, hang out more in the lobby area when you first walk in or outside by the, by the Disney sign or by the water fountain, getting their pictures taken and all that. And my gosh, some of these costumes are unbelievable. Mm -hmm. Like yeah. people go all out and spend a lot of money on these on these outfits that they're wearing, and it, they put a lot of work into. It. And of course, like they so they deserve all like the media coverage they can get and all that, uh, and Facebook and Instagram and social media. But it's not it's not like so people think 
like one of the things is I say I'm going to a comic convention. Oh, what are you dressing up as? Yeah. Well, you, you know what? Like one percent, two percent of the people dress up. Yeah. <laughs> most most people don't. <laughs> so that is something that is kind of a myth. Yeah. Out there. Okay. What about you, Holly? What What were some of the things that um, stood out to you and some kind of fun things you saw on the floor? John Stamos. <laughs> <laughs> I liked, and it's weird because as I mentioned before, I take a lot of photos of everything. I'm taking photos, videos. I didn't take that many photos and I don't know why, because they had some really cool photo ops and looking back, I don't know why we didn't do them all, but that was something we would walk by them and I would comment on, wow, that's a really cool photo op just uh, down every, so you know, Disney likes their um, masking tape, right? So Mm -hmm. there was a lot of masking tape all over the floor, um, (laughs) just (laughs) with lines and stuff. So that is one thing that I I noticed was all these different masking tape areas. But in between all those, they had all these photo ops everywhere um, from stacks of luggage um, that you can take a photo behind to Anna and Elsa, um, the... Toy Story pizza delivery truck um, was out there. I mean, like that was something that was really cool. And I don't know why I a, didn't. There like was a wall of Pixar balls. Okay. Yeah, like, glass, like really cool, fo- and... like down every single. So when you walk in like to the left-hand side, it's like a swap meet, literally a swap meet. And those are all like the <laughs> vendors, I believe they paid to go in there and <laughs> sell their stuff. And then each it's all categorized. Um, and then they'll have like the archives and then I, so it's like booths all over and in between all these are these great photo ops that I watch people taking photos in them I've seen lots of photos but we only took like I don't know five or I don't know yeah, something we didn't something take very many yeah there was like a like a giant hulk hand you can get your picture with yeah and- there, the line was like a half hour to get your picture with the hulk hand. yeah and maybe yeah. that's why because <laughs> but most didn't that one did yeah, but um, so that was really cool. And then other things that really stood out to me were the random stages all over. So they would have like smaller panels all over um, throughout, and they just had little stages where people would come on and do a quick little panel. So little things like that that I didn't really anticipate. I just thought it was going to be like big panels in in the auditorium and with the huge stages. So that was kind of cool. The little panels all over that you catch here and there. Yeah. Um did did y'all go I saw a video of the uh the Marceline Missouri. Did y'all go by the Marceline um booth or whatever? Yeah and that and was sign the I only bench bought yeah We did. So I did take a video or a photo of that. We did sign that by the time we, I think we did that Sunday. So there wasn't much room, but we did sign the bench. They had three or four of them out there and they were all full. Um, And that is one spot that I actually made a purchase from. I didn't purchase the whole lot um, during the expo, but I did purchase a a patch and a um, ornament. So, and then we did sign that. And we were still thinking about doing, they were selling bricks. And you can put your name on it and they'll install it whenever they're, I don't know what they're doing, some, the new renovation. So they'll have the new benches out there and then a new little brick area. Um, and they were pretty reasonable, $125. Mm-hmm. And obviously the proceeds go to the museum. So something to think about. Yeah, that's um, when, when we go visit family, uh, we drive, I say close, we drive probably two and a half, three hours from there. Um, and so okay. I've always meant to, that's going to be like a side trip one time is just to, to go, um, yeah. go up to Marceline and, and see all of that as well. So, um, yeah, it'd be really cool. The, um, and, and I did, I, I was able to see a lot of the, the photo opportunities and everything, but also with each, each acquired brand, like Lucasfilm has a mate. I mean, they obviously do what they do in the panel, but they have a big floor showroom as mm-hmm. show area as well. And like Marvel and everybody mm-hmm. else. Right. Yes. Um, and so can you tell a little bit about, about those? Like, are they, are, how grand in scale are they or, or how like fun are they for that fan? So we didn't go into too many of them. Uh, we did go into the, what was it? The parks one where, where they had Walt's 
uh, statue that's going to be put up in Epcot. Yeah, but they had the the areas where they had all the costumes out. Mm -hmm. So that was pretty cool. Um, so that that area was actually pretty large uh, where they yeah, had, they were, and you would know, that's not really my specialty, <laughs> the Star <laughs> Wars area and then all the Marvel stuff. And so, but I, that was pretty cool. I, yeah, yeah, so they had a lot of the, like like the different stormtrooper outfits and all that for, from the movie set up, and yeah, you can get your you know take pictures of them and all that. Okay, and I, I had heard that there was the uh, the Indiana Jones costume from mm -hmm. the fifth Indiana Jones movie that was actually out yeah, there. Yeah, I, I, I think I did get a photo of that actually. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> so yeah, they had that there with the whip and everything. Uh huh. Uh, another really big thing about D twenty three Expo are the panels um and especially i i'm a big marvel fan i'm a big i'm a star wars fan as well but I, i'm a big marvel fan that so like in that fandom you know we typically talk people talk about what happens at san diego comic-con and the announcements that are made there but it's always uh kind of almost alternating a year like san diego comic-con there's big announcements or if there's a d23 maybe they'll hold out some from San Diego Comic-Con and, and now announce them at D23. Um, and so I know the panels are, are such a big deal. And I know that they, I know it was difficult to get into a lot of them and there is a reservation system and everything. So can you two talk a little bit about some of the panels you were able to go to, um, some that you really, really liked and maybe some that um, you weren't able to go to? Go ahead, Holly. Or yeah. Stan, you, you have your... Yeah, he has the... Yeah. And I'm so bad about the names, but um, we did get into a couple good ones. But yeah, they... Well, the first one, okay, the first one we went to is to celebrate the magic of Disney and Pixar. Okay. That was the first huge one we went to, uh, where it was kind of Disney animation, Disney live action, and Pixar upcoming projects, which they showed and talked about and there was what was there like a dozen trailers we saw that oh that my gosh during that show yeah. it went like an hour long too yeah it went an hour <laughs> over what was oh, scheduled really? which is it was an crazy. hour and a half yeah. scheduled and it went for two and a half hours and we got to get to dinner that night because <laughs> we had a whole hosting a dinner um but, but yeah it, that was a phenomenal panel and you and, got like he said you got to see a lot of trailers um, for the very first time, and then a lot of actually snippets of the movies for the very first time. And then it's funny because you you're so excited because oh we got to see that first, and then an hour later they're playing it on yeah. Disney Plus. So. <laughs> <laughs> and and we, we kind of have to describe this room. So this room there's it's basically three giant theaters in one. Okay. Like, like, I, 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 how many seats were there, Holly? Was it thirty thousand or three thousand? Something it was something like that. No, I because I know it was at least like seven thousand. So it's seven thousand. Yeah, it's it's a lot of seats, like bigger than I ever imagined. <laughs> so this room has a stage in the middle, which is the B section, and then there's an A section on one side and a C section on the other side. So if you're in the A section or the C section, you don't really get to see the stage so much, but they have one, two, three, four, five IMAX size screens. Okay. Plus two theater size screens with smaller screens underneath it. Okay. Uh, wow. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so this, it's, it's room is huge. <laughs> this room is huge. Yeah. So this is like a football stadium size room yeah. that you're in basically. And every seat is taken. Okay. Mm -hmm. it, and and it, you can't it's hard to get into these these things and not everybody gets to go into these yeah um and yeah it the, the energy in these rooms are just off the hook yeah yeah, um, yeah because you have and, all of these celebrities and and executives and i don't know it really is such a cool feeling to be in that room even though we couldn't really see the stage <laughs> from where we were sitting. Like, it's crazy to think that we couldn't see the stage because yeah. that's how big this room is. But we had a nice view of the screens right in front of us. Um, but I mean, you can they're, hear they're everything. Yeah, they're high definition IMAX screens. And we, we yeah. were pretty close to those. Hmm. Uh, okay. And there was, there was uh, pretty much, like, Holly talks about celebrities, like, any upcoming movie that Disney's putting out for live action animated, 
or Pixar, that celebrity was in that building. Okay. They were in that room. Mm -hmm. So then there's new Snow White movies coming out. So they had the lady that was playing Snow White and the evil queen were both were both there. Okay. It was yeah. What was there footage from the Snow White movie yet? Or is is that barely like barely any. It was of Snow White like falling and dropping the apple. That was basically all we saw. Um, but their chemistry was amazing. I want to see that movie just based on their chemistry when they were introducing the film. So yeah. really cute. Um bro, I was gonna say oh but the um, I don't, Little just, Mermaid uh yeah. uh action that's coming out. They showed us the entire sequence of part of your world. Okay. Okay. So that the was cool. Sequence. And the lady Hallie Bailey, <laughs> I shouldn't say lady, young lady, she's adorable. And she mm-hmm. like all of it was one of the best things I really enjoyed was all of these new up and coming stars Mm -hmm. that they're debuting for the first time. And they are same lifelong Disney fans. And they were just as excited to be there as we were excited to see them there. Like some of them were very emotional when they came out on the stage and just in absolute awe that they were showing their trailer on the screen at D23. And you could feel that energy and excitement and really just humbled about it. Um, And that's how I felt about the the girl playing Ariel. Um, She, (laughs) and it's a long time coming for that film because they started before the pandemic and they're trying to film Deering. And so um, she's just was adorable. But one thing that was really shocking to me, and I guess it shouldn't have been, but they were really strict about phones. Like if you even put pulled your phone out to like check a text message, they somebody was right there telling you, put your phone away. Um, and it wasn't for all the panels, but just certain ones like this one where yeah. they were showing, you know, not anything that was released. Um, so that was quite interesting. Um, trying to watch people sneak photos. It didn't work out really well. I know I saw (laughs) some photos and, and clips on Instagram, um, where people, obviously they're gonna sneak it some way, somehow, but that was quite interesting watching the ushers, like right there telling you to put your phone away. So, yeah. 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 uh, Which is a bit different than like, I was at Star Wars celebration and what they did to prevent you from taking videos but they had had really bright flashlights okay so if you start filming anything they shine their flashlight directly into your camera okay. well they had the flashlights and they would come over but yeah they didn't do okay. that but they yeah. were they weren't shy about yelling at you to put your phone away so i was terrified i'm i'm like <laughs> texting my husband like i cannot have my phone out if there's an emergency you gotta do it. i'm getting yelled at I'm, right now yeah i'm not i'm not gonna get yelled at i'm i'm putting my phone away that that brings up a that brings up a question like the um a little off topic but you know like both of you are 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 big big parts fans um big Mm -hmm. disney fans that that you have a a social media presence um and you're you're showing things in the parks you're showing things you know at uh, d23 expo and things like that and to me it's always when I read a story about somebody who like, you know, does something they shouldn't do at a Disney park and they get banned from a Disney park, whether it's like they go behind stage and they're, they're trying to take pictures where they shouldn't be taking pictures or the people that like, you know, the now you hear about more like fights and everything Mm -hmm. at the parks that, and how like these people are banned from parks that whenever I read those things, I just think how horrible, a feeling that would be to like be a fan of this and never be able to go back just real quick like i i want to get your your views on that like people who i i I guess i don't know what do you think it is for people like is it worth getting the pictures and getting like the the focus on social media and not being able to go back and keep doing that or like what are your thoughts on that I think that those people that do that aren't true fans, honestly, because especially for like, for me, for Disneyland, that's Walt's park. Like Mm -hmm. you, for me, it's about a certain amount of respect, um, whether it's for the actual 
infrastructure or the cast members or the other guests. So are you ruining it for the other guests, their experience? Like I, when you're talking about this, I immediately think about living with the land and the woman who jumped off the ride to grab the cucumber, right? Well, maybe that was somebody's first time. And, and yeah, there isn't a weight on that ride typically, but what did you just do for mm -hmm. maybe the kids sitting there watching this woman do that? Like, I, I guess it's funny, but I don't know. I don't think it's funny because I guess the whole situation was kind of funny because there's a lot of like memes that came out of it and, you know, like <laughs> things like that. Like you can make, you can make a joke and make anything funny, but what if everybody did that? What if everybody did yeah. what they weren't supposed to do? Um, and that's why they always say, this is why we can't have nice things. Right. And why a lot of things have to change because of this, um, so yeah, so why it would have been cool for me to be able to sneak uh, yeah. a video. I mean, I don't know. Is it, like you said, is it really worth it? Because somebody else is going to have that video yeah. um, anyways. So I'll just watch theirs instead of me risking getting kicked out or, or whatever, because I would rather enjoy it. Yeah. Stan, what are, what are your thoughts on something like that? Yeah, I agree. I mean, I mean, if you if you want to do a show, do a show within the conf like within the rules. Mm -hmm. Don't go looking to to break rules to try to get more likes or more more thumbs up or whatever it is you're trying to get. It's not worth it. I mean, stay stay within the rules. Respect other people. You know, if you want to shoot a video, that's fine. I, I mean, like when I'm shooting videos at the parks, I try not to get people's faces in, and if I can mm -hmm. avoid it. You know, I, I just I, I try to respect other people's privacy and 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 their thoughts and feelings as well. Yeah, I uh, like like when I go to the parks, I uh, I'm <laughs> I'm very careful as to I, I've even said I've even told the boys like don't do any don't do anything that's you're going to get in trouble because if if we get banned from Disney parks, uh, that's a really really big deal. And, and <laughs> uh, I one time a few years ago I went. Um, I was on a business trip. Um, so I went to the parks one day by myself and, um, like I've asked this about people shooting videos in the parks and everything before, but like, I was very, very self-conscious in the parks because like I would, I would film on my phone and, um, and I did it for at least, I guess my excuse was I was doing it for my boys who couldn't be there. And so like, I'm filming different things and I'm like, but I'm like whispering into the phone because like, mm -hmm. I don't want to be too loud for the people around and everything. So I'm, I'm extremely self-conscious about things like that. So whenever I read anything about somebody kind of misbehaving or doing something they shouldn't be doing, um, one of my first reactions is like, I, it, it makes me very sad that like, if that happened, um, I would be incredibly sad about that so I, the the second kind of off-topic question is when you are in the parks how do you get um, I guess comfortable with like like having a presence and, and showing things showing videos and things in the parks is it it are there enough people that are doing it um that it, it's it, it's not uncomfortable or does it take a little bit of getting used to I still am very awkward or I feel awkward when I'm trying to like, if I, and I don't do it as much as um, like my friends that I go with, like they'll record themselves the whole time. Okay. We're here. And I might do that a little bit, but I still get very uncomfortable mm -hmm. and shy about it, but it's just <laughs> for me, just, I don't know, just recording little snippets here and there and then adding it later or just, I don't know, but I, I definitely am not that person that has, in fact, my husband bought me one of the, the gimbals to hold my phone mm -hmm. and I actually returned it because I never ended up using it. Um, because you see the people walking around and they're recording the whole time. Um, I feel like I'm too busy to do that. I'm yeah. all over the place. Stan just kept joking um, when <laughs> we were at the expo because it was squirrel, squirrel. <laughs> like, I don't know. So I, I personally can't just sit there and hold the phone and walk around and, okay, we're going to talk about this. And we're, I don't know, that's just not me. So I'm more of a, 
let's film little <laughs> snippets of things and add it in later, make a reel about it later, make a post about it later type okay. of person. So I guess I'm a little bit more sneaky about it. Um. <laughs> okay. All right. The, so getting back on to D23, my um, kind of the last question about D23 is um, what are some of your more memorable moments at D23? Um, and it, you can, you can, you can say one or you can have two or three. Um, that's up to you. So Holly, let's start with you. What was um, some of your more memorable moments there? Um, and what would you, I guess, what advice would you give people if they wanted to do something like this in the future? John Stamos. <laughs> <laughs> No. Um, so like Stan said earlier, like if you, if there's a celebrity or somebody that you're interested in seeing, they're probably going to be there. So that's pretty cool. Um, mm -hmm. and you can look at the schedules and kind of guess where they're going to be, try to get on, on those panels. Um, but I guess for me, it was more of like, the archives, um, the, the new things coming, the stuff that they talked about in the park. So there was one, um, I don't even remember which I park something. What was that one where you walked through Stan? What was that called? But, archives? but, um, it wasn't, I don't think it was the archives. It showed what's coming to the parks and they showed like the models of like the, um, how they're changing splash mountain. Mm -hmm. So that was really cool. But, um, I didn't witness this, but one thing oh, that dreams. got me, Disney, Disney okay. Dreams. Yeah. So they showed what they've done in the parks this year and then what's coming, but they had, um, and I'm sure everybody's seen it, but it was the statue of Walt that they're going to put in Epcot. Mm -hmm. um, and I wasn't there for this moment, but it was a couple of days later when I saw this photo and um, it was Bob Gurr yeah. looking, have you seen that photo? Mm -hmm. Yeah, I'm going to cry just thinking about it. And he was so emotional because this was like a life-size statue of Walt. And so I know Stan and I got a photo um, with, with that statue and it was just, I don't know. So that for me, even though it was a couple of days later, I wish I could have been there at that moment because that was beautiful. And I couldn't imagine seeing Bob looking at this statue and, you know, that's his friend. Yeah. Um, um, so for me, I really liked that kind of stuff, like the yeah. history and then um, Walt's plane. <laughs> so, so while the panels and all of that was really cool and really exciting, I liked the more sentimental aspect of, of it. Yeah. So if you, if you do this again, would you, I guess, would you spend more time doing stuff like that and just walking yes. around and seeing so these that's, things? Yeah. Okay. So that's exactly what I told Stan. I would still go for the big panels, but the second I hit that floor on the first morning, I would go do those things first okay. because um, we kept putting them off. And in fact, we didn't even get to finish the archives um, because we were in there. And then I realized, oh shoot, John Stamos is about to go on stage. So we booked it out of there. Um <laughs> So yes, I would, even though um, that isn't very busy when you first, those are the, the things that people do later, I would do that first because that means more to me personally okay. um, than the panels and the shopping and all of that. Yeah. Okay. Stan, what were some of your more, most memorable moments? Well, first, we went to three panels trying to find John Stamos, by the way. <laughs> <laughs> we did see him at two of them. <laughs> All he did get to see. Wasn't enough. <laughs> <laughs> but the one that we were right up close from the front row, he didn't show up for, which was... Well, cool. and I mean, Ben, such a fan that he is, was he was he walking or I don't no, know, at any time? not he... that I know of. Okay. Um, he could have had a costume on or something, but I'm sure he was at some point because, like you said, such a fan. But I don't know. I never... I never heard of him walking out and about, but he could have been. Every time we saw someone with a full face costume, I would say, Holly, that's John Stamos. <laughs> Stor See that Stormtrooper? That's John Stamos. <laughs> uh, as far as celebrity meets, my biggest thrill was seeing the Muppets. Okay. Uh, we, got to see, we got to see them twice uh, in, in two different performances, Electric Mayhem 
uh, did a did a song to open up the uh, what was it the epic entertainment showcase the musical extravaganza uh, they opened that one <laughs> yeah that was fun. and then they, there was the 30 year anniversary of the Muppet Christmas Carol uh, okay so they they performed at that one as well and the small stage that we were looking for John Stamos set for. The Muppets ended up going to that one and we would have been front row. We would have been right there. And they, it was uh, Floyd, Janice and Animal did a complete interview on that stage. And afterwards they took selfies with everybody. Oh, that's cool. Like, well, man, that was an opportunity of a lifetime miss. You talk about missed opportunities. Um, Holly's talking about the picture with, with Walt, with the statue, um, with, with Bob Gurr. Did anybody see that photo of Tony Baxter? The, uh, the Imagineer. Uh, I, which photo? There was a photo of Tony standing in line, just like everybody else. Oh, really? His, oh no! The twenty-three bag. I did his, not see that. His his stuff he bought under his arm. Yeah, he's just he was standing in line That's like everybody cool. else waiting That's to get cool. into the panel. It was, it was really cool. Yeah, and so people were commenting that yeah, I saw him in line, and I was too afraid to go up to talk to him. And yeah. So th those are the type of things that you you just you have you have to kind of happen upon. Mm -hmm. you know, mm -hmm. and keep your eyes open when you're on the show floor because uh, you never know who you're going to bump into who you're going to run into you know yeah so it makes you stand solo one day at one of these things <laughs> <laughs> or, so or, if or, uh, ringmaster holly <laughs> like when i go to a when i go to one of the parks um i try to take it slow now i have two small kids that you know that's as the two of you know when i mean the definition of a successful trip is like for kids, especially is writing as much as you can, seeing as much as you can, but I try to take it slow. So I guess Stan, the same question that I asked Holly, is it, could you go to a D23 expo and not see any panels and, and just kind of walk around and would that be enough for you? Or do you think that you do need to have a panel or two at least that you're going to. Yeah, I, I I'm a big fan of the panels. Um, it, it's really exciting. It's really thrilling getting, especially the big ones. Yeah. Uh, there's all sorts of smaller panels. I mean, I'm just kind of looking one, two, three, four, five, fifteen. It's probably about thirty panels a day. Okay. Uh, over over the three days, uh, you're not going to. You can't go to all of them because yeah. there's five different theaters. You know, plus the D23 stage, uh, which isn't really you don't need reservations for you just walk into uh and honestly that was probably my favorite stage when, when push came to shove was that d23 or the disney plus stage i mean sorry because mm -hmm. it's small yeah. it was a small stage you just walk in and you sit there for you know as long as you want or as little as you want and you leave and there's different there's like little 15 minute things happening okay but i like i do have friends that go and they don't go to any panels they for the most part they sit in the mei wdw radio booth the entire time and let the celebrities yeah. come to them <laughs> yeah <laughs> they, 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 they'll they'll spend the entire day just in the mei booth uh most fan travel booth and half the celebrities that are there will end up there talk going there to talk to lou anyways yeah so they'll end up seeing everybody that way yeah <laughs> one really cool thing about that is um i saw all the pictures of like the figment and everything the, and mm -hmm. figment is my favorite parks character maybe favorite disney character in, in i don't know um i didn't know until i listened to uh him and becky talking about that i didn't know that they did that i didn't know that the figment balloon was there i oh. just thought like oh how cool like there's a figment balloon here and then like but you know that was like that was at those booths which i thought was really really cool um it, and for people that don't know that. it's not a, it's not a figment balloon like you would picture like like a, like a hot air balloon it's made out of balloon animal balloons yeah like how you would make a take a balloon animal make a dog out of it it's made out of that and it's huge it is eight ten feet tall 12 feet high. yeah i would say uh, 10 to 12 feet tall. yeah three-dimensional figment and they've been doing these balloons since the very first expo uh mei has, has been doing and becky has been has been uh sourcing these out uh they did one year they did the disney cruise ship yeah and it was really big and you could see it from one end of the, of the arena to the other or the, or the show floor and they were told they can't be that big anymore <laughs> <laughs> so, but yeah yeah that and was he, really, actually, really Lou cool. told holly she could take figment home if she wanted to 
<laughs> he offered it to her to take it home with her. <laughs> I told Holly, did bring you, the head home at least. <laughs> did you see, um, either of you see the reels that they made after um, the mm-hmm. day that they were tearing it down, somebody got inside yeah. of it and were walking around. <laughs> so funny. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> um, so the to kind of wrap up D23, um, I want to talk some about the parks. And did either of you go, get to go to the big parks panel? We did not. No. Okay. Yeah. Holly's still mad at me for that. We stood in line for an hour and a half and didn't. We got shot <laughs> out. We didn't get to go. We wasted an hour and a half of quality floor time standing in line didn't get to go in um then what but my kind of my takeaway from that just watching on social media was kind of there were a lot of announcements it seemed like a lot of announcements for disneyland and some of the international parks and it was more sort of ideas or blue sky thinking Mm -hmm. for walt disney world um i want to get your impressions on Things like that, and and in particular, um, in Orlando, you know, you go back and you look at the history of the the rivalry between and the competition between Disney and Universal, and they're they're constantly kind of you know trying to best each other, which ultimately is good for fans because that yeah gets the best product out. Um, but you know, in I think it's twenty twenty five, I think is when Epic Universe opens in Orlando, which will be, you know, it's the brand new Universal Park. Um, Do you, are you worried at all about Walt Disney World Parks and um, when Universal is so close to opening up something that's brand new, a a full park, um, are you worried what that could do to the Disney, to the Walt Disney World Parks and what should they be doing, you think? I mean, Disney fans are so hardcore that I don't think it's going to, I don't think it's going to empty the the Disney parks at all, but I do think they have a little bit of a run for their money, um, especially when they take so long to build one ride. Right. Mm -hmm. Um, But we are so indebted into Disney that we're still going to be going to Disney. You just might add universal on to your vacation rather than um spend your whole two weeks at disney maybe you're going to add universal um i know somebody on our podcast thinks that it's it's bad for for disney um i know i mean it it i don't know i it's hard, it's really hard to tell because but they do they need to step it up a little bit and like you said, it was ideas. And it was so funny because mm-hmm. social media, everybody was running with it. Oh, there's going to be a new villain's land. Oh, there's going to be new this. And then they had to take a step back like, oh, wait, those were just ideas. Yeah. And yeah, I, hopefully those ideas do come to light. That would be amazing because there were some really great ideas. But um, you really had to like tear it apart piece by piece and say, okay, what was actually being announced and what was just ideas and I don't know if it was because of like what you said what is happening at Universal so they had to throw something out there they just don't know what they're doing yet um but I mean what they did say about Disneyland and the new um shows and things obviously I'm excited for that and I'm excited that most of the hundred year celebration is going to be taking place at Disneyland whatever that's going to look like Mm -hmm. I don't exactly know yet so that makes me happy um but yeah I mean to take three to five years I mean how long has the train been shut down at (laughs) Disney World since well I get to it was it was a few months before we went in 2019 I guess yeah I mean that's a long time that train that's big deal the train is a staple um and I know you can blame it on the pandemic, but you can only do that for so long. Like if, if Universal can build an entire park in almost the same time it takes to build Tron, oh, you might have a little bit of problems. So, <laughs> Stan, should, you be, should we be worried? Okay, so I got a couple of theories on this. Uh, first of all, <laughs> uh, as far as announcements go, uh, there was a lot of Disneyland announcements, not too much for Disney World, but Disney World also has Destination D, or Florida also has Destination D mm-hmm. every other year. 
So next year they're going to have Destination D in Florida, which is not as big as D23 Expo, but it's kind of a more of a local Florida type thing. So we may get announcements there. It's holding all hope. As far as Universal opening up uh, Epic Universe, that's just going to bring more tourists to Florida. And if you sure. have more tourists going to Florida, you're going to have more people going to Disney World. They're not going to go just just to to one park. I can guarantee you that. I mean, sure, a lot of them will. A lot of them will, will you know, test the waters for the first time there. And it's it's really counterproductive. I mean, we do this podcast and we promote Disney. We promote Disney parks. We promote Disney movies. But to be honest with you, I want to go to a park that's not as crowded. Yeah. I, I kind of hope less people go. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, I mean, Holly, dream. when you mentioned it's not going to empty out the parks, my first thought was, well, if it does, I'm yeah. there during that time. <laughs> yeah, yeah, no, like for us, that's kind of nice. Um, but yeah, I, I, they're not going to go bankrupt. That's for yeah. sure. Yeah, like, like, <laughs> the whole, the whole reservation system was brought in just to kind of control the crowds yeah. and where they're going because we're only going to allow so many people at Magic Kingdom this day. So if you want, you can go to Epcot or you can go to another park. And, and, it, and that's the way, their way of controlling the crowds a little mm -hmm. bit because the parks are so darn crowded right now. Yeah. That there is breathing room if they do have <laughs> less people going. Yeah. Yeah. You know. um, so my, my rapid questions, um, I have four rapid questions. And these stand notes, these are ones that you can either explain um, and kind of explain your answers or talk about your answers, or you don't have to explain anything at all if you don't want. So the first one, and we'll we'll start with um, Holly. If you don't mind going first, we'll start with you sure. on, on each one. So the first is at D twenty three. What was your hidden treasure? Like something that that stood out to you? Maybe not most memorable moment, but a hidden treasure that that you weren't expecting. That was a lot of fun. Um, the costumes, the cosplay costumes. I wasn't really expecting them to be that extravagant. And I wish I would have taken more photos because they were amazing. And the amount of time and effort that they had to put into them was just stunning. Okay. All right. Stan, yours? Holly's energy. <laughs> I was not <laughs> expecting her to be still standing come Sunday morning. <laughs> she blew me away with that, that amount of energy. So funny. Such a ball of energy. <laughs> so then what was, um, favorite thing at d23 um like overall favorite thing that that you saw or that you did or you experienced there i'm gonna say honestly the people that i was with it wouldn't have been what it was if it weren't for the you know i went with stan i went with another friend but the the people that we met for the first time so basically okay. honestly the people if I was there alone, for instance, I probably would have left after the first hour. <laughs> okay. All right. <laughs> it was funny because we got there. We split up. I went to the Simpsons panel. She went on her own and she messaged me saying, I'm going home now. <laughs> I, I didn't <laughs> like, even sit was... down yet. I just sat down in my chair and she's already going home. <laughs> uh, the people, people for sure. Absolutely. But the Muppets, the Muppet Mayhem live concert was, that was a dream come true seeing that. Okay. All right. And then, um, at least favorite thing, or if you want to think about it this way, something that should be changed in the future for future D23 events. The lines, how to get in. Um, they do this. They've done this so many times. Why is it like this? They make, um, so say a panel starts at 10, people are lining up at 5 a.m. Let the people that have the reservations go in. Why, like, why make them wait? Get mm -hmm. get rid of the line. I know there's going to be lines, but get rid of the lines as much as you can. Um, like I said, if you have a reservation, let the people in with reservations. Let them have a seat. Um, and especially, we weren't expecting the heat wave. There was a heat wave when we were there, so we were outside for two hours. We were we were grumpy by yeah. the time we got in there. Um, figure that out. I know it's a lot of people, but come on, Disney. Like you, you know how to do this. Do it better. That. Yeah. Well, and I, I, I read about and also heard about on on your uh, recap the um, like the media out there trying to kind of hype up <laughs> D twenty three and it not really going the way that they. Yeah, I mean, we've going. been out there for two hours. We it was hot. It was yeah. already ninety degrees, and they're like, "Okay, on the count of three, you're gonna yell, we love D 23 and we're like, uh, "No, pass." <laughs> <laughs> 
Yeah, no, Stan, what's the one thing that did? Yeah, one thing that Disney Parks does very, very well is control crowds, and they had zero control of how they were <laughs> keeping the crowds entertained and happy in this situation. Okay, all right, and then the last one, um, and I kind of we, we kind of touched on it a little bit earlier, but um, if you had one or two points of advice for somebody who is going to their first D23. Um, figure out what is most important ahead of time. Um, for example, this year they did a lottery type thing where you got to pick four panels per day. Okay. Um, I picked four panels per day and maybe there was two on there that I could care less about because I wanted something, but then they picked, gave you one of those. So okay. had I known that I would only pick the one that I really, really wanted and like what we said earlier, um, don't wait until the end to try to do those things that are important to you because you're hoping that the lines are going to be less because they weren't. And maybe next time it will be, but um, make make a list of what you, you want to do. Even write it down in your phone and do those things that are important and take more photos. I did not take enough photos. So. Okay. All right. Thank yeah. you. And something that we learned by by Sunday was bring snacks. Oh yeah, <laughs> they, they tell you at the beginning don't you, no outside food or drink. They're telling you to bring only empty plastic water bottles is what they were telling us. Well, we asked the security guys, are we, are we allowed to bring snacks in and whatnot? He goes, yeah, bring whatever you want. I don't care. <laughs> so the next like that's by the third day we were bringing chips and granola bars and chocolate bars yeah. and yeah, all sorts. That of yeah, that is them. a really good tip. That, yeah, yeah, because you get hungry and food there is difficult. Yeah. Wines are long, expensive. So yeah, that's a good tip. Okay. All right. Well, thank you, you two for doing this. Um, it's great to talk about D23 and kind of get um, like a inside look at what the expo was. So um, to close out, um, for people who want to follow more of what you're doing, either with Grand Circle Tour podcast or with the solo show for Stan, um, how can they best follow you? Go ahead, Holly. We are, uh, we're everywhere. Like, oh my gosh. And it's under Grand Circle Tour podcast. We're on Instagram. Facebook is Grand Circle Tour magic ticket holders. We post a lot on Instagram. I post on my personal as well, um, at Crawford's on the go, like Stan said, full of energy, I'm always <laughs> on the go. <laughs> but, and then you can listen to us anywhere you listen to your favorite podcasts. Okay. Yeah, we do a live show every, every Monday night on Facebook and YouTube. And we have a special right now with our YouTube where you can subscribe and ring that bell for completely free. It doesn't cost you anything right now. You can go on our YouTube channel. Cody's and face was like, like oh, oh. <laughs> yeah, you like and surprise, like and subscribe, ring the bell. It doesn't cost you a dime. We're not charging anything right now for it. We got a special, so check that out. And Cody, I want to thank you for having us on. This yeah, was a lot of fun. thank you. Yeah, nice. yeah. Thanks for doing this. I like these conversations. And and I have uh I, I also want to point out I we're at about an hour now. So this is a this is a victory for me. Um so thank oh, you both. <laughs> Thank you both for uh, for coming and speaking and um, have a great rest of your day.